Hello, welcome back. In this module, we're going to talk about how to manage your cash, uh, how that the most effective way to make payments and also manage your savings. We're going to look at effect, uh, important factors to consider when you're choosing a bank. Um, how do you practice um, cyber safety and banking safety practices? You can examine different ways you can use to pay bills. Um, also very important, uh, this is uh, oftentimes a misconception on debit card versus credit card. And we'll also look at some short-term saving options. So let's get started. So a bank is oftentimes included in its, in its name. So there are different types of deposit institution. The name deposit institution means that they can accept deposits from customers. Uh, so the most common ones are commercial banks or savings and loans. These banks and savings and loans are insured by FDIC. So FDIC is a private corporation uh, and is called actually the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, up to $250,000. So uh, even if something happens to the bank, as long uh, you are protected up to $250,000. Uh, most of these banks and savings alone also have online banking services and digital banking apps. Um, some common ones are local ones. Uh, they may range from national to regional. Um, so uh, here are some examples. Uh, most banks will have the ba name bank in its name, so Citizens Bank, uh, or a savings and loan. Uh, so again, they will have the name savings and loan in its, in its name. Another very common type of deposit institutions are credit unions. Credit unions are technically a nonprofit that serve uh, members. So you have to belong to some kind of membership to join a credit union. They are, uh, they are insured by the credit union association, also up to $250,000. So a lot of consumers can't really tell the difference between a credit union or a bank. Uh, so again, the name is oftentimes part of the business's name. So St. Jude's uh, Credit Union. Credit Union tends to be smaller and more local, but because they are nonprofit, then their fees may be slightly lower. Um, and there are also banks that are online only. And for those banks, you don't need to open an account in person. Here are some factors that you want to consider when you are choosing a bank or a credit union. Um, one is convenience. Uh, particularly if you use cash, uh, you want to choose a bank that has an ATM that is close to your day daily activities so you don't end up paying unnecessary fees. Um, there are also advantages to having a bank that has a branch in person so you can ask questions in person uh, just in case something does happen. The other very important thing to consider is, are the fees and minimum balances. Uh, fees can add up quick quickly. Uh, the two fees that a lot of people get charged are overdraft fee. Overdraft is if you um, try to pay and you don't have sufficient money in your bank and you end up um, getting your check bounced or the payment get declined, um, you can end up with an overdraft fee. Uh, ATM fee is money that they charge for taking out cash if you're using an ATM machine that's not part of your bank's. So you want to choose an account that has minimum balance that works for you. So what is the minimum balance is the amount that you need to keep in the bank. Uh, some may be as low as $10 or $500 or $1,000. So you have to look at what you typically keep in your bank uh, as a balance. Uh, the good news is that a lot of institutions have special discount for uh, account for students um, as well as seniors. And they these accounts will have very low minimum balance and no fees. As we mentioned before, most banks nowadays have online banking and mobile app. Um, so you want to pay attention to online security. We'll talk about some strategy that you can use in a minute on how to safeguard yourself. Um, how important is the ability to handle transaction online for you? Uh, in today's world, that answer is usually very important. Convenience is important. Uh, the other things that you want to take into account is what other services does the bank provide and how important it is for you to be able to do all your banking uh, services in one app or one location. Uh, some of these tips may seem like common sense, but it actually uh, can be... Uh, 
a potential challenge or unexpected for uh, new users. Uh, first is plan ahead. Um, you need to know that your check when you get deposited may not be available right away. Uh, direct deposits are available a lot faster than paper deposit, uh, especially if you use a paper check both if you receive a paper check or if you make a, uh, make payment using a paper check, that they can take days to clear. To clear means that you will receive the fund or the fund will get withdrawn from your account. When it comes to bill paying, earlier is better than later. Don't wait until the last minute. Um, you can pay your bill using either paper check or you can use digital online payment both of them take time. Even if you pay someone digitally online, uh, you will find you will see that typically the uh, the available day or the execution day for your payment will be two or three days from uh, from from the day that you um, instigated the transaction. The another important thing to um, obtain is overdraft protection. Uh, you can talk to your bank and ask for an overdraft protection. Um, this is very useful because if you have overdraft protection, that will avoid a declining payment or a bounce check, which can be very expensive. Uh, ATM, again, watch out for ATM fees. They can be quite substantial. They can be $5 on a $100 withdrawal. That's 5%. And if you take out $100 every week, that is 5% per week. If you multiply it by 52 weeks, then you're talking about over 100% per year. So that's a lot of money. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, the other thing that you want to take into account is the type of services that your bank provide. Um, some of us may need a safe deposit box in the bank. Um, that's a useful thing to have to keep your uh, valuable belongings. Um, another service that banks oftentimes provide and some people are not aware of is Notary Public. Uh, there are many times in your life you may need a signature notarized. Uh, you say, where do I get, go to get that done? Uh, your bank is actually uh, a very um, convenient place. Um, most bank, almost all banks have notary publics um, on duty, and they are, their service is usually free for their customers. So in addition to talking about cybersecurity, there are some practices that you can uh, you can employ to make banking safe. Uh, so the first is quite obvious is to ma monitor your bank account uh, and to verify that the transactions are indeed your transactions on a regular basis. Uh, online banking and mobile apps is a great help here. You just go and monitor your, your bank on a regular basis. You can also even set up monitoring or notification services uh, for payment beyond a certain amount. So for example, you want to be notified if a transaction is greater than $50 or $100. Um, another important thing to take into account is um, to have more than one checking account. Um, I typically will use a, uh, an account that has very low balance that is linked to um, my mobile money app so that um, even if my mobile money app gets hacked, uh, they only have access to an account that doesn't have all my money. So don't put all your money in one account. Uh, assuming that you're, you know, you, you're able to keep minimum balances on multiple accounts. Uh, and that is something to keep in mind as you uh, improve in your personal wealth. Uh, another good strategy is to use your savings account or money market account for direct deposits for your paycheck. And then you move money over to the checking account when you make payment. So there's one more step to transfer the money before you make payment, but then you keep your money a lot safer because once again, then um, people don't have access to your, uh, to your, um, to all your payrolls and your savings. So you can, transfer money, let's say you once you have created your budget, um, then you can transfer your monthly budget amount plus a safety margin from your savings account to your checking account. Uh, others strategy are pretty common uh, sense. Um, use complex password, use multi-factor authentication. Um, 
and then also watch out for phishing emails and tax and scams. So anyone who will call you and say, I need cash right now, um, be mindful. Uh, they are getting more and more sophisticated. Um, one thing that I always advise um, anyone is don't do any banking past 8 o'clock at night. So now that you have money in your bank, how do you spend it? There are different ways you can use to pay bills. Um, the one way is to use cash. Everybody accepts, well, not everybody accepts cash, even though in, in theory they should. Uh, sometimes you may need to use a cashier's check or a money order that is actually quite common uh, with uh, uh, rental agreements or other types of large purchases. Uh, the good advantage of using a cash or a cashier's check is that they are anonymous and you don't, uh, no one will question them because the, um, in terms of cash, that is based on the United States government's ability to honor it. Um, cashier's check and money order is contingent on the bank. Uh, the con is that, or the downside is that there's no record of payment unless you ask for a receipt specifically. And if you lose money, if you lose cash or you lose a prepaid card or money order, then it is lost because you cannot have any way to prove that that money belongs to you. Uh, another option is to pay from your checking account. Uh, you can do that by using a paper check or a debit card. You can also use an online service to have your bank send an electronic check. Uh, you can also set up recurring auto pay automatic payment. Uh, this type of uh, payment is very common for rent or subscription services. You can also use credit card. Notice that credit card is a loan. This is not using your money. Uh, you can also use mobile app or digital payment. Remember that mobile apps and digital payments are just a platform. Uh, they can be linked to either your checking account directly, uh, your debit card, or a credit card. Uh, for those of you who have not write a paper check before, uh, there are a few components for the check that is important. Uh, first is you need to put in the date and you need to write out the name of the person that you're paying to. And you have to write out the amount that you're paying in words, in addition to writing out the amount in um, numerals. And then here's your signature. And on a check, there are a few important um, information. Uh, the first is the routing number. This is the number for the bank. So you may, sometimes when you uh, apply for a rental property or you sign up, uh, you, you sign up a uh, gym membership, they will ask for your bank's routing number. And then the second set of number is your account number. So the routing number is specific to the bank. The account number is specific to you. And then the check number, uh, this is unique to this one single check. Next. It, we want to talk about the difference between a credit card and a debit card. They both have their uses and they both have their advantages and disadvantages. A debit card, comes, the money comes directly from your checking account. A credit card is technically a loan. So with credit card, you can spend money you don't have. With a debit card, you can't. The, but it, uh, you are spending your own money from your checking account. So the therefore the pros, the advantage of using a credit card is that you can limit your spending to what you have and there's no interest payment because you're using your own money. Uh, but there are a lot of advantages of using a credit card as well because when you have use a credit card, you can, pay, you can view a credit history, particularly pay attention to paying off your balance every month. And by building a credit history, you can have a healthier or a higher credit score. Uh, another advantage of a credit card is that if there's an emergency, so again, the key here is emergency, uh, even if you don't have money, you'll be able to meet the emergency. Uh, a lot of credit cards also have purchase protection program, uh, programs uh, and also uh, protect against um, unscrupulous vendors. So if you find out that there are charges on your credit card that are 
wrong or they look appear to be fraudulent, you can dispute that charge with the credit card company. And by law, they will have to honor that. So you can just say, I didn't make this charge. This is a fraudulent charge. And they'll put a stop to it. And you don't have to make that payment until they verify whether or not your claim is valid. If your claim is valid, then that payment will just be erased. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a charge to your debit card is similar to having cash taken out. Um, you don't have that protection. So one option is you can choose to process a debit card as a credit card transaction, and that will give you some of that protection. So the bottom line is that credit card is actually a can be a convenient and a very used, useful financial tool. Uh, but you need to practice discipline to pay off the balance at the end of each month. Finally, let's take a look at some short-term savings options. So this is a uh, this are money that you want to keep liquid, meaning money that you want to be available for use, both as emergency fund or things that you need for uh, transactions. Uh, the easiest one is savings account. Um, they usually doesn't have any money and it is a good place to put your paycheck and direct deposits. However, savings account typically don't pay a very high interest rate. Money, money market account um, works pretty much like a savings account. The main difference is that they typically have a higher minimum balance requirement. Savings account oftentimes has very low uh, or zero minimum re uh, balance requirement and has no cost. Money market account has uh, will charge you a fee if you don't meet the minimum uh, balance. However, they do have a higher interest rate. The next most common um, type of savings option is a certificate of deposits or CDs. Um, they usually have a higher interest rate, but you have to leave your money there for a fixed um, uh, fixed time period. Can be six months, can be a year, can be two years. Um, the most important thing to keep in mind is that when you set up your CDs, do not allow your institutions to automatically roll over your CD when it matures uh, because interest rate could change and oftentimes uh, the institution may not give you the best interest rate when you re-roll or uh, roll over a CD. So just keep that in mind. Those are the typically three most common options for your short-term savings. We'll end the module here. I will see you again soon in the next module.